Hey, this is Steve for myothercareer.wordpress.com. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about trusting your instincts. Like I had said in part one of this, which is a blog post, um, I was hitting kind of a block, so to speak, in regard to how I was progressing on my current screenplay of writing Pride is Forever. It's not that the story wasn't working, it's just that something about what I was writing didn't feel right. And I've learned over the last couple years as I've been writing, and this is no groundbreaking thing that when something doesn't feel right, that's because it probably isn't. And that you have to learn to trust your instincts. If it feels off, that's you know, your subconscious or whatever telling you that it is. Um, it's it's one thing to uh, to just feel like dialogue's a little blah. It's another thing to feel like whatever you're writing just is not what should be coming out of your fingertips, you know, and, and that's where I was at. So when I kind of concentrated on what the reason was uh, for my lackluster performance, I guess you could say, or for that feeling, I realized that it was because I was forcing myself to use a method which doesn't work for me anymore. Let me expand on that a little bit. When I first started the blog, I used the Screenwriter's Workbook as a content mechanism for blog posts. I thought, well, I'm going to kind of educate myself a little more on screenwriting. I thought it would be a fun thing to do to post each of the exercises in the book. Uh, as a blog post, you know, and, and that's how the blog started. Um, after the two-year anniversary of the blog, I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to start this new screenplay using that same method. And, you know, while it's, I'm, I'm not shitting on the exercises in there, it's almost too basic. It's kind of like being an advanced algebra and then the next year taking remedial math. Well, you know, if you're not continuing to use the stuff that you learn in advanced algebra, you're going to lose those skills. And that's kind of how I felt. I had taken too much of a step back using the baby steps method of the screenwriter's workbook. And, and this leads me to the second thing I wanted to talk about, and that's making methods your own. Always go out and learn about new screenwriting methods, new screenwriting theory, and, and read up as much as you can. I'm, I'm always trying to read and come across new books and new blog posting and forum posts and all sorts of stuff. And over the course of the last couple of years, I've taken bits and pieces of everything to kind of work it into my own method of, of what works and what complements the way my mind works creatively. I, I listen to how my creative mind works and I, I kind of engineer my methods around taking advantage of my personality and my work habits and stuff like that. And what I was doing was I was ignoring all of that. And I was trying to take a step back to, to a group of exercises that um, weren't my own. They were somebody else's. And I'm not saying that the Screen Writers Workbook isn't important. It is. It's a great tool to use for somebody who doesn't know much about screenwriting, but after you've written one or two screenplays and taken what you've learned, you're going to grow a little bit, and you're going to start taking and changing that method into your own. And Sid Field even talks about that in the book. He says, you know, take what you've learned here and expand on it and change it the way you need to write. And I, and I wasn't listening to myself. Um, I, I, was, I was ignoring what had, what had been working for me. So um, that leads me to my third point is, you know, don't be scared to try new methods, but, but learn to recognize when they're working for you and when they're not working for you. And, and um, you know, this method wasn't working for me. So um, I had to, you know, kind of come to the realization that uh, I need to go back to the way I was and, and go back to how I was progressing because, um, you know, it's important to look back and know how you got there and to remember the tools you've got and use them as reference. But... Once you've moved past a certain level, you need to keep moving in that direction. And, and like I had stated, you know, in reference to how Shane Black uh, writes, and especially in the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang screenplay, I'm not saying that I want to write just like him, but that just the excitement and the ease and just the, the way his, his uh, description and, and action and, and, uh, and dialogue all flowed, it was so much fun to read, you know, that's kind of the level I want to get to. And, you know, that's years away if I ever get there, which is not likely, but I think you get what I'm seeing, you know, whether you're uh, a bodybuilder and you have, you know, the epitome of, of the professionals, you want to look like that, or, or, or you're a race car driver and you want to race like the NASCAR guys, the Formula One guys, you know, there's a level that you're going to aspire to. Realistically, you'll never achieve, but you've got that, that goal and, and, uh, and it just wasn't, it, it wasn't clicking. I was moving back. And, and so, uh, I had to recognize that what I was doing just wasn't working out and I needed to listen to my creative mind and and go back to, uh, to to some of the methods that I had created for myself. Um, and that leads me to my fourth point. Don't force your writing. You know, if it feels off, you have to listen to yourself. It probably is off. Um, if, if, if something is amiss, and it, 
it's hard to explain verbally, but anybody who I think is a writer or, or a painter or, you know, a architect, even an athlete, you know, whether you're training for a race or something, you can feel when something's wrong, something's not clicking. you got to learn to listen to yourself because more often than not, you're going to be right. You know, so don't, don't force your writing. If something feels weird, take a step back and try to figure out why it feels weird. And I was able to do that. You know, I, it, it felt weird. I, I, I felt like what I was writing wasn't, it, it was like I was going through the motions or I walked into the wrong classroom or I was in a dream. I mean, it all kind of made sense, but it didn't feel like me. And that's because it wasn't, you know. Uh, the way I, I find that I work the best is to build the entire skeleton before I start writing. I mean, I'll plan out all 52 of my points and, and all, all of my... Um, all of my little plot points along the way, and I'll, I'll write pretty pretty descriptive details. I've, I've noted a lot of that um, back when I was was writing about uh, during writing Surf Cold. I you know I posted up all that stuff, and you can see I get pretty detail oriented, and that's what works for me. And having to go back to a more basic level, it just wasn't clicking anymore. I, I like to build the whole thing out before I start writing, and I was starting to write before I built it all out, and that I mean that ended up being what I recognize as the problem. I moved it back to too basic of a level, and I was writing before I was ready. But I wasn't going to give up, and that leads me to my fifth point. Don't force your writing, but don't give up when you're writing. Listen to yourself. If it feels off, it probably is, but that doesn't mean you should stop. That means take the time to identify the problem. When you've identified a problem, take the time to figure out the solution to it. Once you figure out the solution, start writing again. Um, I know some people will walk away from projects and maybe they'll come back six months later, but I found in my own writing, if I walk away from a project, meaning that I stop writing it completely, I'm never going to go back to it. I've got probably two or three screenplays that I started a couple years ago that I walked away from and I've never went back to them. I said, well, I'll come back to this after I figured it out. I never did. You know, whereas with these last two or three I've written, I've hit points where I've been stuck and I just kept thinking. I kept thinking, I kept thinking, I'd watch some movies and I'd wait until I figured it out. And when I figured out what the problem was, then I figured out what I needed to do for the solution. Once I got that solution, boom, I was right back on the project. So I know these five points I was talking about seem real basic, and if you're an advanced writer, or anybody who's done these before, you'll, you'll know this stuff. But, but you know, I, I tried to write some of this, and I wanted to do it as a blog post, and it was just too long. And then I tried to shoot a video and, and talk about everything I talked about in my blog post and this, and it just was too long. So. Splitting the two up kind of allowed me to, to get it out in a manner that I felt was the most efficient uh, possible. So I kind of wanted to bring you up to speed on why I was going to shift gears a little bit and stop doing the exercises from the Screenwriter's Workbook for, for the rest of this. And I don't think I'll go back to that again, uh, maybe except as a reference or to answer questions. Because uh, you know I've, I've been moving forward, especially with my last screenplay. It felt really good. I felt like I was progressing creatively. and. I need to get back to that point and, and, and I need to keep you know doing what I was doing and evolving that instead of taking a couple step backs to a more basic level. That's not the right direction for me to go. So just you know, I wanted to be a short video, we're at like eight and a half minutes now. But um, if you haven't seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, you know, check it out. It's a great movie. Uh, I linked to the screenplay in uh, my last blog post. I'll put a link in the more info section uh, of the video for you to check that out as well. And, uh, you know, I'd encourage you to give it a read. It's a great screenplay. So until next time, this is Steve for myothercareer.wordpress.com. Keep writing.